Hello everyone, this is Volatile42 and I'm going to show you how I installed my Powertronic on my Interceptor 650. So I start with removing the seat and the side panels. Then of course you need to remove the tank and disconnect all the various things from underneath it. It may seem a little daunting initially but after you've done it once it's not that difficult. So here you can see me removing the evap line and the drain hose. And that's the power connector for the fuel pump. The sender unit for the fuel gauge. And that's it. And that's the fuel line going from the fuel pump to the injectors, uh, I mean the injector fuel rail. So you can see some fuel dripping off from there, but that's fine. Just be careful not to have any ignition sources nearby. So now comes the most difficult part and that is getting the wiring harness ready and routed along the frame of the bike so that all the various connectors are the right places. So you saw me removing the two ignition modulators there. I'll be connecting those back later on once the wiring harness is in place. Now that's the little thing that you use to switch between the two maps when you don't have a map switch. So that just lets you short out the two ends, kind of like a switch would. So we start from here, this is where you would mount the main Powertronic module and that's the connector to it. So we start from there and take the rest of the harness uh, up to the front of the bike. Most of the connectors would go towards the front because they would need to connect to the uh, ignition, I mean the ignition coil and the uh, injectors. And this is the part that I found most difficult because it's a little difficult to route all those connectors and wires underneath those metal plates in the chassis. The plate uh, towards the rear is easy. The one towards the front, uh, initially we tried routing them on the left side, but then we had to move them to the right because that's where you have enough space to do it. So here you can see me doing the connection for the left injector. So basically you disconnect the stock injector line connected to the input of the Powertronic harness and the output from the Powertronic would go towards uh, the injector where the stock connector was. So that's how the Powertronic works. So the stock line, the stock connector that would be connected to the injector now connects to the Powertronic and sends the signal to the Powertronic instead of the injector and the Powertronic sends back the modified or enhanced signals to the injector. This is the right side ignition coil connector. Similar concept as uh, in the injector. So the Powertronic uh, connects to the coil and the stock uh, connection from the stock ECU to the coil goes to the Powertronic. I did not show you the connection for the left side ignition coil, but it's similar to the right side. And these are the wires for the right side injector. 
for cable management purposes I had to reroute some of these wires that you may not be seeing here but the connections remain the same. And now we need to connect the wires for the throttle position sensor. And to do that, we need to remove the throttle body cover on the left side. Again, a similar procedure here. We connect the original ECU's male cable to the Powertronics uh, female receptacle. And the Powertronics male cable goes to the uh, throttle position sensor. You can see me doing a bit of very shoddy cable management there. And now it's time to connect the ground wire from the Powertronic to the battery's negative terminal. I forgot to show you the reconnection of the ignition modulators. I basically had to place them over the battery and uh, get them connected to the uh, points on the harness. That's the map selection switch. Pretty straightforward. Here you can see me connecting the switch to the harness but of course I had to redo that to make sure that the cable was tucked in neatly inside the frame. And now the relays. So the kit includes two replacement relays which are basically a higher current rated version. And here's how it looks once all the cable management has been taken care of. Not very neat, but at least everything is tucked in. So the tank goes back on, everything gets connected. So now we need to test all the connections with this uh, diagnostic module. This also works as a bypass for the Powertronic. So when this is connected, the bike basically works on the stock ECU signals. So with the engine running, you can see the pulses from the ignition and injector signals. 
This indicates that the connections are good. Now we finally plug in the Powertronic. So as a one-time thing, you need to connect the Powertronic to your computer and do the calibration for the throttle position sensor. The Powertronic application has something like a wizard to take you through an automated process to do that. But for me, that did not work so well. Basically, the maximum throttle position was not being recorded correctly. I was getting an actual range of 30 to 224, but the program was only recording a maximum of 185. As you can see here, even without full throttle, the unit was registering full throttle. So I had to discard this wizard and put in the values manually. With that done, I just had to do a send and burn to save the settings in the Powertronic unit. And that's it. So that's it for the installation. I'll be sharing my views on the Powertronic with you after I've ridden with it for a while. So see you on the next video. Bye-bye.